people who can boost you through Darkness Wars, you can basically at that point go to Darkness Wars. Yeah. And start gearing up. Yeah. As you'll probably have a good chunk of experience doing those as well, so you will be on your way gearing up your talismans. Uh, uh, I would hesitate until I had actually seen how much XP you're actually getting from each Darkness Wars run. Uh, you will have a good chunk from the first one, you will not have yeah. a lot of XP from the follow ups. It's the same as Polaris uh, runs ahead. Uh, you have first one, you have a good chunk of experience, so it's all nice and dandy. Afterwards, you just basically don't have any experience. That's why yeah. on the first day I had good gear, but I couldn't even use it. <laughs> while you had uh, advanced significantly further uh, experience wise. Yeah. And check character progression. But it's uh, much easier for me to catch up. Because basically, if, yeah, went and done some action missions and some other missions, but yeah. I could have just gone with the main story and straight through it without anything else. Yeah. But rushing through the main story means that I would have probably issues in terms of the skill availability. Yeah, and it's interesting looking at uh, sort of basically the dungeons and everything are definitely the best way to get the gear. Um, but in terms of how you actually sort of are best off getting the XP, then that does seem to be sort of from just straight flat out missions. Um. Yeah, I personally think that it's missions which give the most experience. Yeah, I, the I think The milkshake and whatnot is nice, but... Yeah. And the thing is that the milkshake is sort of, is a nice thing, but you just don't generate enough XP from it unless you, unless you have something like you are going to the um, quarry and you are uh, well, airport now um, and you're just going to go and grind um, the mobs um, yeah and if you can grind I'm pretty sure I guess you'll go well if if you can grind nightmare mobs um, then um, sort of that gives you good XP um, the others yeah, but aren't Nightmare Mobs at QL 10? Yes. Then you will have XP penalty doing those. Oh, yeah. To no, no, but my point is that once you are QL 10 and you are able to go and grind... Um, sort yeah, of, okay. Um, and, 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 like, frankly, now that I'm... Uh, now that my skill is ranked... Uh, where it is, it wouldn't. Ma uh, I would no longer um, get too much of an XP penalty. Um, sort of, uh, I'd still get a little bit of one, but sort of, it'd be like uh, they'd be hard as opposed to devastating now style of thing. Um, and so, yeah, it'd be doable. It still wouldn't be sort of as worth it as uh, sort of if I actually had. Uh, Bob's my own age to go and play with, um, <laughs> uh, which would be sort of without doubt the best. Uh, really fucking hate hammer using mobs. Um, uh, which one? Uh, just uh, doing the ward activation mission, and so you get waves of filth ads coming up, and loads of them are hammer users, and so. Uh, they just uh, <laughs> cluster stun you. Um, I doesn't actually do that much in terms of uh, damage. Um, it's just that sort of yeah, there is no way you're avoiding getting stunned unless you have unstoppable force or slider. Right. So actually, there are quite a few ways that you can stop getting stunned. Um, but where's the fun in town? Happy pants! 
Well, yeah, you, but you'd have to wait for them to have impaired you first. Um, True. Which would be slightly missing the point, but... I think there's also just the consideration that, sort of, whilst you're getting your first build sorted out, and whilst you're getting you to your sort of ideal leveling build, god damn that fucking bastard dodge! It keeps turning itself back on. Just, I think it's every time that I crash, it goes, "Oh, you want double duck to active dodge back on." Yeah, I actually have spoken about it this uh, in this run. Um, and yeah, I I may have uh, complained about it. Um, I'm also a dumbass for the fact I've bought clear in the path and haven't fucking equipped it yet. Um, but yeah, once you get your leveling build bought, then actually. Uh, sort of, it becomes far more about your gear. Um, out of curiosity, uh, in terms of beating the gatekeeper, is it just you beat him by any means necessary, or are we saying we both have to deep, or uh, any means necessary? It doesn't okay. matter which role you choose. Fair enough. I, to be honest, I'm kind of intending on deeping, so. Um, yeah, if up to you, man. I'm intending to be tanked because I've already done the deeps and whatnot. I, a lot of me is actually intending on waiting on seeing what kind of um, gear I can get uh, in Elite. Um, given that because I'm going to be having to actually uh, sort of run Elite. Um, without the benefit of a cabal group who will automatically sort of go blues yours um, yeah. and it may be that I happen to get a group of friendly um, purple dwellers um, and uh, they all turn around and go no dude you need the gear go go for it um, <laughs> uh, and I get my choice it may be that I end up in a fully blue group um, where I'm having to explain what to do on every fucking pull. Well, that is the beauty of unknown future. Yep. Now, here's the beauty of not remembering what the hell I'm doing, so... <laughs> Spray Montax blood around area. Which area am I spraying the Montax blood around? The one where you were directed to. You put yes. the mirror on the floor, and then you click on the vial of blood to spread his blood around? Yes... nothing... Place the mirror on the ground! Uh, right... Yes, thankfully that someone more competent than me is playing in my group, and this is getting group credit! Awesome! Now we'll defeat the wrath and then smash the mirror.
Oh god damn it. Yeah. Yeah. You got some SP or whatever. Grat. I feel so fulfilled. Boom, Beaumont down. Well done. So it's easier than before then? Uh, yeah, and that took some fairly uh, sort of. I'm, I had to use uh, a heal potion and a leech potion. Um, right. So. Uh, and I was very glad of the fact that I have cauterize in my build. Um, as to whether it was easier or harder before, it's hard to say because this is the first time in a very long while that I've had to do things um, from a uh, sort of green perspective. And there were definite parts of the fight where I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> um, especially after I I popped a hit point potion and it got me most of the way up to full. Um, and uh, sort of then I uh, suddenly thought I made leech potions exactly for the treason. Um, good, good. Um, which basically just had me going, We can give you everything, the world. You only have to choose to accept it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, pretty much, that's the one. Ooh, look, someone has left me a gift on this lovely table. Oh, spoilers. I want to know what's the gift. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Um. It's probably something awesome. 
I'd be quite happy with like three QR6 mages. Uh, that'd be that'd be awesome. <laughs> Awesome, I can I can have a QL6 weapon. Oh wait. I already have all of the fucking QL6 weapons that I want. Thanks guys. Uh yeah, so uh, it's sending me to uh London. Go and chat up Ricky Sonak. Yay. Yeah, we had a team rigging me, calling me or I done it ah crap, me either. Um, yeah, I, I have need to go there. I have the second call. Uh, well, yeah, I, yeah. Um, I yeah, I have to go and do the um, mission that gives you um, uh, the other thing. What I might do is go and check out just how much it's going to be costing me uh, to potentially buy a QL10 blue. Um, and resist the urge to go, oi, hollow, stick a couple of weapons on for low. Uh, but I would be surprised if I can pick up a blue QL10 for. <laughs> For for under a million packs, um, but you never know. Um, hope springs eternal. In fact, no, it it'll it has to be under a million packs. Well, for no, for which one? A blue one. Um, On weapon? Yeah. Well, that should be fairly cheap, I think. Because the thing is, no one should be bloody buying them anymore, really. Of course, I'm totally proving that uh, theory wrong, but um, there we go. Market. I would like a bled of QL10. How much you cost me? Um. <laughs> right, I would just like to state for the record I did not ask Toad to sell a uh, blade. <laughs> I'm going to spend five grand more and buy a ruthless blade. Oh no, my blade has no roof. I've got mail. We. Oh yeah. Uh, hang on, this sword appears to be rusty. Um, excuse me, what do I see for a refund? My my sword, what I've just bought. Is rusty. Also means that I definitely do not have enough to buy new sprint. Um. Yeah, I still sprint one. So. Uh, see, I I got sprint two as quickly as I could. Um. Yeah, I just haven't bothered to get to. Uh, London, London yet? Yeah, it's one hundred thousand packs for Sprint Two, um, which proved to be a bit of a boo boo when I went to buy it, and went, oh, I don't have that much money. Um, you damn capitalists! God damn capitalists! <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually fairly sure that the uh, Templar are like uh, not capitalists. They must be like imperialists or some shit. Um, all of your packs are belong to us. Um, <laughs> right, I think I've done something wrong. Probably. 
what do you think you've done well what what makes you recognize that you are just wrong um, because just things don't do what I tell them to it's like it's it's unfair um, what can I say it's yeah, I, you. I need to <laughs> need to gather those familiar essence uh, thingies and uh, yeah. make them into shards and whatnot. Kind of feel that I probably shouldn't have just not bothered with this mission at all. <laughs> Actually, it's it's a good mission um, as long as you sort of you do it right. Um, from the sound of it, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, the only thing which is, I also remember it from uh, my original attempt of getting through this uh, on the main, mm. uh, is that you don't have the group credit for the uh, anima shards or... No, shit, you know. It's annoying as hell to group. Find and destroy the fuse box. What did the fuse box ever do to you? Eh? This reminds me of a mission I was sent on during It's an evil fuse box. Ah, uh, well, of course. Gaslights and make our way through a bunker in the dark. We combined two spells to create a makeshift sonar, saved us from falling into a bottomless pit and getting eaten by. But that's neither here nor there. Chop chop! Now is the perfect opportunity to get your hands on the contraband merchandise. Fear the wrath of my blade.
the joys of attempting to use a flare quickly and getting a do you want to delete this from your inventory? It's like, no, I'd really like to fire it, please. But, uh, <laughs> The game knows you better than you know yourself. Yeah. Delete, 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 yeah. Oh, crap. I think I've just been provoked by a shade. <laughs> he just used threaten on me. Did you find that provocative? Well, thankfully he didn't wave his willy at me, so it could have been worse. The boys with their guns are running some sort of facial recognition program on the body, but I don't need them to tell me that this fellow isn't Illuminati. He is Phoenician. So, the Phoenicians are involved. This complicates matters. I'll have to discuss this with the Force Marshal. You can leave. You ought to before you're swamped by more insignificant humans. There's nothing more to be accomplished for now. When James Julia says get the fuck out, we get the fuck out. Yeah, she called me like two hours ago. Yeah. Honestly, I'm more just... Odi uh, I, I'm odious motto to <laughs> piss off the him Julian <laughs> as much as possible. What? My character AWOL has the highest authority, has the highest respect for authority. Um, and certainly does not believe that if someone uh, gives you an order, you should consider it. Uh, and then, if you can be bothered doing it, yeah, okay. Which reminds me, I should probably check on Twitter to see sort of who I've been accused of kidnapping this week. Um. <laughs> Yeah, one of these days you will force me to do something on uh, RP on Twitter, and I don't like that. I'll never force you to do it. And please, I can just as easily RP as you on Twitter. Um, That's true. Yep. Um, Wessel, there we go. Uh, already got the accent down. <laughs> Ah, oh, this is Dragon of Forever! <laughs> Defend the library. Yeah, that... Defending library. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I feel so fulfilled now. I'm now a two-star Templar. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm three stars? Oh, yes, they love me. Oh, my word, they've just gone for... God, how many bloody ranks have I got? Uh, I suspect that... Yeah, just the game's now just randomly throwing ranks at me. <laughs> you are now rank 13, no, 2, no, 5, 1, no. What? Well, it was like sort of, here, here are a couple of stars, here's another one, here's, here, here's no, no more stars for you, here's one star back, just in case. Um, here's, uh, just go away. Um, I can only assume that they have tired Yay. of me. You've secured the library, have you? Yep. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you clearly deserve it for all of your hard work and patience. Um, oh, bugger.
I've just remembered what a pain it can be doing this uh, mission and having to extinguish candles in a specific order. I was about to ask a really stupid question. I was like, so is uh, sort of party planner or whatever you've called him, uh, sort of, uh, is he a Templar? Uh, and then I'm like, hang on, he's in the cabal. Uh, so he better. <laughs> Now I can work towards Molten Steel. Molten Steel is one of the most awesome hammer DPS single target abilities. Yeah. Big time. As it gets inherent crit chance and crit power. So I have now clocked 6 hours and 27 minutes. Still an Ithoth. Yeah, you are considerably ahead of me. By the way, have you seen the nice uh, I've now put on my stream? The nice what? The nice clock ticking how much time I've spent. Oh, that's very good. Um, and no, I have not. Uh, I'm going to have to look it up now. Um, and then bug you tomorrow to find out how to do it. Um, yeah, it's an uh, app called Snaz. You put your Snaz online. Where are you? I also have this nice NM race watermark, which you barely can see above the map because it's just place wrong. <laughs> wow, that, that is really wrong, isn't it? Yeah. It was supposed to be unobtrusive, but that was a bit too much unobtrusive. <laughs> yeah. There's unobtrusive and then there's a wall. Oh. The one which I keep forgetting to do is I keep forgetting to actually change my um, thing to actually uh, reflect what I'm doing. So I believe that at the moment it says that uh, I am actually... Uh, uh, I think it says it's raid time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not... Not much better at this, to be honest. Yeah, um. oh, come on, what the fuck? <laughs> it's the mantra of how to play Secret World. <laughs> oh, no, I just see the mob randomly running around. Fair enough. And it's kind of the case of having played this for a while, even if you don't have the gear, you Ooh. have a definite advantage of anyone who is new to the game. So you will be doing better damage, better yeah. healing, no matter, simply because you just use your prior knowledge to it. Yeah, and there's the thing that sort of because, like, instead of going, Oh gosh, that looks like an interesting ability. Sort of, I think I'll try using that. Uh, sort of, instead, 
we know exactly what builds we're leveling with um, we know what is going to give us the biggest bang for our buck um, sort of we know where to go in various missions and sort of I remember the first time well speak the, for yourself well, I, don't, well, yeah, I don't remember but, where to go but when you get sort of like uh, an instruction like go to the temple club um, true sort of I'm first time that I was told go to the temple club I spent ages could not work out what the hell they were talking about um, and then I got to the temple club I ran in and I got lost in the temple club <laughs> the place is a U shape well, uh, yeah but and by the way if someone hasn't been to Templar club yet and you're a Templar you really should the dude uh, in the library there is awesome to talk to yeah, uh, I'd like to where all the hot babes hang out, um, and and yeah, you can't get in there if you're not a Templar, so that's awesome. Um, which means that if you're not playing a Templar, then just ignore everything we just said. Um, yeah. Have to say though, the guy in the Temple Club, that's actually the kind of beard I'm going for at the moment. Um, <laughs> Oh no, I'm like, I like I I reckon I'm actually probably uh, coming up on the like two inch long beard mark. Mm. Yeah, probably. <sighs> but yeah, and uh, just the game has so many different bits in it which sort of. I'm sure that they have plans for in the long run, and I sincerely hope they actually get to use them. Um. Yeah, I kind of think is uh, investigation mission stuff. As uh, you have tits piece of information here and there, and. Uh, yeah. If you're like other lore hounds that I know of, uh, like Abel, for example, uh, what are you, talking about? you um. will then uh, know quite a bit of what's going on around you compared if you just uh, mow your, mow yourself through missions and just then at the end game you go like, what? What the hell are you talking about? Who's that guy? Uh. I'm betting the fact that uh, Slopushka hasn't even actually noticed the uh, big adverts for the Fourth Age um, uh, magazine in London. Um, and if he had, he still wouldn't actually have any clue about why they were even slightly relevant. Listen to the furious denials. <laughs> Relevant to what? <laughs> the fact that they uh, wanted to start a new age, kill the humanity, and wake up the ancients? No. 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 Um, no, the, uh, uh, um, the, f the Fourth Age is a business magazine. Um, you'll never guess who publishes it. They're part of this I have. weird umbrella corporation who's called, um, and you might maybe have heard of these guys, Orochi. No, never heard of them. Ah, um, oh, understandable. Um, and yes, uh, the cover of this month's um, magazine is taken up by the chairman of the board of Orochi. Um, because he's not going to turn out to be important at all. <laughs> Yeah, but still, fourth age. So what? Fourth um, age is what's happening now, as far as I understand. Uh, yes, it is. But the p just the point is that the magazine is called Fourth Age. It's not a sort of. There's no. Well, as far as I'm aware, there's no particular relevance to the fact the magazine is called Fourth Age. It's just the fact that uh, they've got uh, Samuel posted all over London. Yeah, I've noticed that after I've done the tower. 
Yeah. Well, I'll then again. Done the towel, then. <sighs> I don't know, some people. Um. Well, like I said, I'm unfortunately not into lore. I wish sometimes that I would sit down and read through it and. Uh, it always end up being yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, definitely do it later. Go okay, definitely do it. Look, point. squirrels. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's about right. Oh, yeah. Speaking of squirrels, poor old agent um, ha was without internet for several days after apparently a squirrel chewed through his phone line. <laughs> I'm just starting to wonder whether his uh, internet provider was just like, oh, what did we tell this guy? Uh, yeah, it was squirrels. Yeah. Um. Flying squirrels. Well, uh, although he's American, so it, that makes it squirrels. Um. Flying bat squirrels. All we need is a moose and moose and squirrel. Um, did you get Rocky and Bullwinkle when you were young? Nah. Fair enough then. Probably going to be a completely irrelevant um, reference to you then. Yeah, almost. Do you like the fact I'm knocking on? the door of a guy who's uh, unfortunately tied to a flaming post outside it. Um. Oh, is my face red, yeah. Um. Yeah, these, these guys are definitely taking much longer to go down. Yeah, no, this is another thing which I mentioned about grouping uh, before I came on is that the fact that even if you have one more person in the group, that's not the same as things becoming uh, twice as easy. It's like things becoming ten times as easy. Simply because the damage output of the group is so much higher that everything becomes trivial. Well, there's also the fact you can uh, uh, sort of, depending on the group setup, you can also have someone uh, sort of like take a step back and suddenly sort of whack some much needed heals onto uh, whoever's getting killed the most. Um, and uh, yeah, and the number of times when it has got sort of uh, hard. Um, and I've had no option but to basically just sort of soldier on, try to kill the stuff, and uh, if I die before they do, then there's not that much I can do about it. Um, if you've got the ability to have a um, uh, a group member step back, step back, provide some support, um, then uh, uh, yeah, there's loads of ways that you can uh, help out a group. If you're actually grouped, uh, if you're running around on your own, then sort of whilst you do get a certain sense of uh, satisfaction from managing to complete something on your own, um, at the same time, uh, sort of you are having to do everything yourself. Um, And that can be, <sighs> and it's one of the things where people often say, sort of like, "Oh, it sort of, this is really hard." And you go, "Well, actually, it's not. It's just the sort of the way that your build is set up, and uh, sort of, uh, and if you've got someone who's going for sort of doing nothing but." as much damage as possible, which I highly commend uh, sort of one's efforts in doing so. Um, but 
it does mean that if you do encounter something which is slightly bigger and badder than you, then you are going to die. Um. Yeah, but there is also the beauty of GSWs that as long as you have the abilities unlocked, you can make changes and adapt. Yeah. Um, and, and it's the thing that, sort of, if you find that actually you are dying, then there's probably something you can do differently. Um, that may be changing uh, to a more defensive build, it may be uh, putting in some, self, some more self-healing. Um, it may be uh, that you need to actually uh, just sort of uh, do something... One more impair and more damage. Yeah. Um, or put in a bit of AoE, uh, or put in a bit less AoE. I'm, if you're finding that you're continually dying in a fight where uh, sort of actually uh, you're only up against one person, and uh, sort of, and you've got a load of AOE in your build, then a lot of the time there is the question of asking yourself, uh, sort of, how would you change to uh, sort of a more single target build, and how would that up your DPS? Yeah, generally in terms of survivability uh, builds, going all out AOE is seldom useful. Yeah. It can be, but it's just it's seldom is to a certain degree. Because if you take the uh, in GSW, if you go with scenarios, scenarios is probably the hardest solo content you can have at current state. And if you want to be successful in nightmare scenarios, for example, at least my philosophy has been to have an AOE builder and single target consumers. Because anything which is a minion type of mob or a swarm mob, it will die to just your builder. You don't even need to yeah. use consumers. And anything else, even if it's a group of uh, mobs, you will probably be better served by just disposing them one by by one quickly, rather than trying to dispose of all of them at the same time, which usually means longer time with three mobs hitting you, compared to just killing one, then the next one, and then this last one, which doesn't really matter anymore. But an AoE builder will allow you to kind of grab all of them and uh, uh, not get and stuff uh, like you're still doing damage so if you have a bigger mob and a swarm you can still do damage to the swarm and kill them instead of just you know uh, yeah I'm fighting this big mob and I can't do anything anymore and the swarm kills me even though it's stupidly easy A lot of the time though, it is just going to come down to finding a build which works for you. Um, and personally I like to have a single target builder and a AoE builder. Um, I know others who just have AoE builders. Um, and to them I say, you crazy! Yeah, well, right now I'm running with both AoE and single target consumers, so it's, it's just yeah. a case of what, what I have available and what do you prefer to do. This single target builder would have been uh, extremely good on kind of well, I'm single mobs or a few mobs at a time. I think it is worth recognizing as well, though, that there are certain uh, times when if you're up against uh, if you're using um, sort of like say a gun um, mm -hmm. with whether it be assault rifle um, um, shotgun or pistols 
then actually then your AOE is frequently very limited um, and it's one of the reasons why many players do favour uh, sort of going melee early on um, and um, because it does give you that ability to uh, sort of uh, open up with um, just straight AOE straight away. Um. Yeah, uh, well, guns is a different type of weapon and yeah. philosophy altogether, so it's... The beauty of guns is that you build on multiple targets. Indeed, but um, I'm just... But if, for example, you're going for a um, sort of, you have decided for whatever reason that you want to have a build which is predominantly using assault rifle and pistols, then early on, actually, you don't have very quick access to AOE builders. To be honest, I do not remember. I think that in shotguns you have in AOE shotguns you do. But if it's pistol assault rifle, then uh, um, and uh, pistol. Uh, just looking. Um, yeah, pistol has above the law, which is a ground targeting AOE. Um, which yeah, one pistol has sucks. Yeah. Um, Shotgun. It has a cooldown as well, I think. Yeah, it does, 15 seconds, so it's pretty much useless. Um, and shotguns has pump action, as, like, it'll cost you 1 AP. Um, but um, assault rifle as well, you've got fire at will in the inner, inner wheel, which is a AOE consumer, um, but uh, you're only going to be building... Um, you are only going to be building on one um, target. Yeah, which puts it pretty much the same bracket as the melee weapons level, of, let's say Chaos, as you will be building on uh, one and consuming an AOE. The unfortunate thing is that you don't bring resources with you, and that yeah. obviously makes melee early on, and even later on, for just quick killing mobs somewhat superior. Uh, but it's not the <sighs> yeah the game is not the same as saying that yeah only melee works and like melee is the king and so forth oh yeah I... melee would be like in group you will always find melee doing more damage than range but it's only because of the buffs range provides that melee is capable of doing that there on its own if I... you just there is also the fact that, sort of, as is pretty standard in MMOs, melee is is still going to have to contend with all of the mechanics which are aimed at keeping tanks on their toes, as well as uh, the ones which are uh, sort of aimed at uh, sort of tying up um, the range DPS. So a lot of the time, uh, sort of, you get people saying, "Oh well, I leveled up as blades, so I'm going to go into um, dungeons as blades," and sort of you get a lot of people going um, I understand your your reasoning behind this not that sure it's such a great plan um, because yeah that's it I think that all of the dungeons can be melee but and all of the bosses can be melee I think at least almost but it is extremely more difficult yeah Especially if you are new and not know mechanics. Uh. I got all excited there. Uh, I got I got a ring drop as an upgrade and was like, oh my god! And it's a heal ring. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I bought that. Got all of that. I, I find I also find that it's extremely easy for me to just drop into the habit of running past pops. Mm. Yes. 
It's not natural for me anymore to try and fight them. I try to avoid them as much yeah. as possible. Oh, I think you're totally right. Um, let's try and see this maybe. But yeah, I've been playing for a while now, a long while now, and uh, all the time I've spent in Innsmouth, basically, doing all the missions. I did some repeats with, uh, not that I got anything out of them, but uh, with a grouping yeah. I done. So... Uh, it's kind of understandable, but it's uh, still it takes time to do even the kill missions. Yeah. At least for me, as it's in terms of a reasonable one day sitting for gaming. That's pretty much it, if not more so, because probably now been three hours at it. Yeah. Maybe more. Yeah. So it still takes a while to get there, so if you're talking about getting past Gatekeeper quickly, I think it's uh, need to speed it up a bit in some way, which for me would probably be just getting into Uh, getting into better gear and just move on to yeah next area. So here I am at the story mission, and here we have another. Puzzles, same as we had in the house. We will need to open up some doors and stuff. So, but it's nice to see people actually grouping and for lower end content because it it's an MMO. It's nicer to do things with someone else rather than just doing everything alone. And it makes things more fun, easier, you make some friends and uh, once you get to the end game uh, you have someone to play end game with. Now, it's unfortunate for the people who I've met now that they've been Illuminati, otherwise I could have invited them to join uh, Audio. Which I think they would have benefited greatly from. All right, let's see now if we have missed anything. Yeah, and just for reference, I will be looking this up on the internet as I already done this the right way a long, long time ago and can't be bothered to do it again. <laughs> yeah, there's also the fact that uh, I did exactly the same thing where I was like, yeah, done it before. Um, TSW database, hello. Uh, 
And this part here is there are a lot of puzzles. It's going to be some tunnels and stuff. And they're great fun to solve. So if you're into that, you probably just want to take a break from the stream or something. Because uh, if you haven't done them before, because it is demanding and it's fun. Ah, uh, I'm missing a piece. Probably need to go upstairs. Then. See, I must admit, I did actually think you said that you were missing a piece there. Um, missing what? Missing a piss, as in it, uh, like, <laughs> um, uh, okay, uh, uh, sorry. Okay, um, uh, I'm actually very dry in my mouth at the moment, and uh, <laughs> should have probably taken a break and uh, gotten a drink. So that doesn't help my accent. Your accent's fine, mate. It comes and goes. I'm trying to work in that's what she said, but I'm not sure I can. Uh, <laughs> um. <sighs> See, this is the irritating point where I have to start thinking about what skills I actually could really do with. Um, Iron Maiden. Got it. Seal the deal. On oh, leveling build, overkill. Now the interesting thing about doing sabotage missions in uh, uh, in the Scorched Desert is that because yeah. I'm kind of right at the edge of what is safe for me to do here there is a strong strong incentive for me to do them without getting caught yeah and sabotage missions and investigation missions are probably Great way to level uh, up. Crap. It's when the little red bar lights up on your uh, thing and you're like, oh shit, something's coming, kill me. Yeah, uh, sabotage and investigation missions, great way to uh, uh, get XP. Um, and they give good XP, particularly this first time you do them. Um, yeah. And, and again, this is one of those times when uh, a sort of experience with the game sort of is incredibly useful um, because I sort of there are achievements to uh, uh, do all of these missions without getting caught. Um, and I have spent large amounts of time practicing these missions so that I can do them without getting caught. Um, well, a new player wouldn't have practiced. No, indeed. But just that. Them, but, but, but just my point is that sort of, uh, for most players, they are unlikely to find it quite as easy as I do, um, because sort of, I know where to stand. I know where to stop. Uh, I know where to move, I know where to go, oh god, not that. Um, and so, uh, for many go newer cry players... In the corner. Yeah, that's the one. Um, but for many newer players, they are not going to have that knowledge. And all I could say is, wah-ha-ha-ha. Ha, ha. <laughs> no, not really. 
Um, it's stuff which you get through practice. Um, a lot of this has taken me a long time to uh, actually learn how to do without getting caught. Yeah, uh, sabotage missions can be frustrating since... They can be incredibly frustrating. As I already mentioned when I started streaming is that you don't have an actual stealth mechanic in the game. It's not yeah. something which you can kind of level up your character in to make it easier. I believe uh, that initially they did actually want to include stealth mechanics but it was just one of those things which ended up just they didn't have time for um, and it is a pity. Yes, supposedly uh, because they wanted to have something different in some way and I, I do think that they managed to have something different um, it's just that uh, basically it's sort of it's investigation missions and sabotage missions rather than yeah. and sort of uh, again uh, just just a bit of uh, uh, praise to Funcom here at least from the main mission from the story mission the talismans you are getting the talismans you are getting they have heat rating and penetration rating on them yeah. which is a uh, good way to go. And attack right again. Yeah, but in terms of, uh, like kind of attack rating you can get from other places, uh, like other talismans, that might not be coming from this mission. Yes. But the fact that they are not including uh, useless stats. Uh, which but it's also not the fact that sort of it, rather than giving you uh, sort of like, do you want a attack rating? or a tanking or um, a heal rating piece, which they did for a very long time. Um, sort of now it is definitely a sort of like here is an attack rating piece. Yeah. Because heal rating and HP is all nice and well, but you only need a certain amount in leveling build, uh, and as long as you have, as I said many times, and repeated many times more during these streams, as long as you have enough heat rating and penetration rating, and it's not, ex and you are not extremely undergeared for the area you are in, then you will be killing stuff so fast that it's gonna be unnecessary for you to heal yourself in most cases. And don't get me wrong, having heals from fists or blood is extremely useful and will make you able to deal with content which is even higher level uh, than you originally could. But then again, you will probably be facing uh, experience penalties by doing that kind of content. Alright, so now he... The main story already wants me to go to Blue Mountain. Which is all nice. Considering I'm still in QL3s. I have not upgraded any of my gear. As I didn't get any weapons and I just got the Talisman which requires me to have... Uh, level 4. In head. And as soon as I have level 4 in hand, I will definitely equip it. But that's not gonna happen right now. Right now I'm gonna upgrade my hammer. So now I have both of my weapon skills to skill level 5. Uh, which means I can equip QL6 weapons. Uh, so, not today, but next time I'm 
I'm streaming, I will definitely uh, ask for a group to go to Darkness War and get my QL um, six blue weapons and hopefully some talismans which will be ready for me to kind of get into the Seriously, that region is insane. <laughs> no, I'm getting shot by a ghost and it's like miles away from me. Yeah. Oh, fire. And right now, if you look at the map, uh, which I'm showing now, you will see that I've only been to Innsmouth Academy in the Savage Coast. I briefly touched up on the Overlook Hotel where I did some side missions, uh, but haven't done anything else. And uh, that has put me at QL5 in weapons. If you would do everything in Kingsmouth, all of the story missions, and you should, as they are very well made, you will probably walk out, if, if you push one of the weapons to QL5, you will be able to walk out of King's Mouth with QL5. Uh, no, with skill level 5 in your primary weapon that you want to use. And if you don't mind spending Black Brilliance on it, you can go to Blue Mountain, purchase a QL6 weapon, which will make all of the uh, content easier uh, in Savage Coast and in Blue Mountain. If you do everything in Savage Coast, then you will most likely be well above the gear requirements in terms of skills by the time you reach Blue Mountain. And if you do everything in a Blue Mountain, you will probably be able to equip anything in Egypt, as long as you don't spread your skills too much around. And it's a fair point to spread your skills around. You might find, okay, you take melee and you just don't like it, you want to do guns. It's fine. You can basically just go back to Kingsmouth and to redo the missions, level up your guns, or keep going in, in Savage Coast or Blue Mountain. Yeah, I'm, personally I recommend rather than going back to Kingsmouth, I would say that it is better to uh, sort of go and repeat some missions um, sort of uh, do some uh, stuff which uh, sort of you may have uh, done fairly recently it may have been a couple of days, hopefully it's been a couple of days so you can actually repeat the mission um, but if you go back to King's Mouth and you get um, the uh, missions which are sort of aimed at uh, sort of completely new weapons, then that's fine. But you won't get as much XP as if you did missions in a later area with weapons which you're not necessarily that, that fond of, and you'll be able to skill up your new weapons much faster. Um, that is true, and that is something which I actually talked about when I said that going to Transylvania as soon as possible yeah. is probably the best idea. Uh, but it also, as I pointed out in the beginning of the stream, you will get the same experience uh, no matter at what level you are in Kingsmouth from the uh, missions. Indeed. So if you're so fancy, you can go all the way back and redo it with the new weapons and just get a feel of them while they're still low QL. You will still have much easier time doing anything in Kingsmouth because your talismans will be of higher level but then you will not be forced leveling with the weapons you all of a sudden decide that you dislike Yeah. but uh, most likely you will be able to see which weapons you like or don't like while you are still in Kingsmouth and uh, you can always obviously just grow tired of a weapon by the after a while and that is the beauty of kind of TSW, you are able to do everything. The whole wheel will be unlocked uh, and uh, yeah. all of the skills will be unlocked. And so you can have days where you're feeling defensive, you can have days where you want to heal, there are 
days when you can just want to blow up everything. Um, and that's totally doable. Yep. And by all means, you can roll alts and do uh, alts, and you can have one spec per alt if you like. It's no one stopping you from that, but you can also do everything just one character, and oftentimes you will go that route simply because if you are into end game, uh, it will likely be more efficient and easier to level up one character to fulfill multiple roles than having multiple characters. So even Awol with his million olds still uh, has one uh, character which is much better geared than anything else and yeah. is capable of doing any role. I'm, frankly, most of my characters are able to do uh, lots of different roles, but ultimately, sort of, I, de I definitely have a designated main. Um, and uh, that character has by far the best gear out of all of my characters. And so with the issue 12 changes um, to upgrades as well, um, frankly, I'm going to need to focus a lot of game time on making sure that that character has all of his stuff upgraded first, rather than doing my normal uh, sort of focus on uh, uh, sort of basically I s would ordinarily be splitting focus and it didn't terribly matter sort of which character I played when um, at the moment now that they've changed that that has very much changed uh, crap. Um, and so yeah I it's it is definitely something to be aware of that your character um can do anything and you shouldn't feel that sort of you have to have sort of one character who is a uh tank and one who's a healer and sort of you can have one character who really does do it all um it might take us a little bit longer um, to be able to do everything rather than just sort of one or two things but at the same time I'm, uh, if you look at the amount of uh, time which you'll be investing in levelling up multiple characters to do multiple roles then actually you will be better served just focusing on a single character especially now that we don't have sort of lockouts or anything to worry about yeah, well, but it all comes down to how people prefer playing. So, Absolutely. if you're into RP, for example, and one of your characters just doesn't like doing anything else but healing, it's a fair point. Yeah, it, you can do that. It's just like I said, like I also have said, it will probably be most efficient to have one character doing it all, or having one main and just RPing with other characters whenever you want to. Uh, but again, not everyone playing GSW doing nightmare stuff, the thing we are racing towards now. We have a large community in GSW who do not actually participate in nightmares, uh, dungeons or raids. They are happily doing other stuff in GSW, yeah. slowly progressing multiple characters or being social, doing RP and whatnot. Uh, by the way, if you're f seeing my screen now, then you see that I'm in front of the Agartha entrance of uh, Savage Coast. And in each playfield, uh, like uh, Solomon Islands, Egypt, and Transylvania, you will be able to enter the first area from Agartha without having been there before. But all of the uh, following areas needs to be unlocked from the inside of the area before you can enter there from Agartha. So, uh, I haven't done it on this character, but on my previous uh, alt, what I actually did is, after creating him and getting to the uh, police station in Kingsmouth, I run through all of the areas and opened all of the Agartha portals immediately, just to have it done. It's not necessary, but it 
kind of just uh, I remember it being annoying uh, when I was leveling my main before I knew all of this when all of a sudden I would just I forgot to unlock portals because I was questing in the area but I didn't need to go to Agartha much so I didn't actually unlock the portals and ended up being like why can't I enter here? I have to run all the way back and all the way around to get where I wanted to. And obviously you can meet up on people and stuff like that, but there are not too many people who you would know who are in low level questing areas. So it's just, it's useful to unlock the Agartha portals uh, when you get there. Yeah, I, it's not the end of the world if you forget because sort of and for example you can get to uh, um you can get to savage coast from king's mouth um and then you can get to blue mountains from king's mouth you can get straight from um king's mouth to blue mountain if you've unlocked a certain part of the mission um but sort of I, in an ideal world totally agartha is the fastest way um to do it um but if you forget, then uh, uh, sort of, it tends to be something which you'll forget, sort of only once, um, because after that, uh, sort of, you'll then religiously go and find Agatha entrances, so you'll never have to do it again. Um, yeah, that's basically why I did it once on my yeah. second run through my old. Oh, yeah, I, it's very sensible. And you can get to all of them without getting killed, even if you're just in kill zeros. You don't need to fight anyone for get to get there. You just run. I'm getting to that irritating point where I have not spent enough uh, SP. It's always nice to listen to Dame, uh, to Dame uh, Julia, because when she's talking, she's like spitting her peas. Each time she has a pea in a, in a uh, ward, it's like she's spitting it. My grandmother would approve of the way that she speaks, what can I say? <laughs> um. I don't particularly mind, I just uh, find it amusing. Oh, crap. Actually, I'm. That's a really sort of minor thing, just actually as a uh, sort of as an English person um, looking at the way that Dame Julia speaks, actually the fact that she, she does speak in a very sort of proper fashion um, is very much in character um, and I'm sort of, she is a proper um, sort of high class dame um, and not in the American sense of the word. Um. Alright, so if you look at my screen now, I've gone to the auction house and I'm looking at uh, things and you can see that the green glyph toolkit uh, only costs uh, a few thousand packs. So 
basically that means that if you can also acquire materials, you can have uh, QL10. Pretty damn quick. Um, yeah, QL10 glyphs, so we can upgrade your heat rating and stuff. Alright, someone just invited me into Hell Eternal, into Inferno Dungeon, which unfortunately is Hell too late for me now. Yeah. Yes, Hell Raised uh, is what you call it on Nightmares. Everyone who is uh, just leveling usually refers to this Inferno because that's the name of the mission into Inferno. It's one of those slightly weird ones where uh, <laughs> when everybody then gets to it at a later point, they're like, I'm looking for Into the Inferno Nightmare, and you're like, oh, it's Hell Raised. Um, Yeah, I'm starting to get fairly close to the point of calling it for the evening. Well, evening. It's ten past one AM at the moment. Um, not entirely sure that counts as evening anymore. So yeah, and even here you have some uh, glyphs, so I don't know, it's just finding... Uh, do you remember the name of the heat rating ones? Accurate. Accurate, yeah, that makes sense. So accurate glyphs here go for 70,000 and so on, so that's, I would say that is too much. That is really not worth paying, so it would be much cheaper to just buy the kits and getting the materials and making them yourself. So you need four pure runes to make them. And uh, well, let's see if I have the name of the rune. It's not taken. Uh, so wheel rune. Yeah. Uh, and the runes are all QL0, just so you know. Yeah, right, so you can have... Here you have one pure wheel rune for 14,000. So you will have four of them at... Uh, slightly below 60 and just a 4,000 uh, so at around 60k you will to make one pure, one, one kill 10 uh, glyph versus the uh, what was the price I quoted but it was way too high and uh, if you just pay attention to the material prices uh, you will probably be able to uh, find them at different times day for different uh, prices because right now you can see here is one person who has basically just uh, let out a lot of items here you can see you can buy 10 for 130k so depending on how much money you have that might be cheaper for you to buy at a higher stack count um, so just pay attention to the auction house and it's not strictly necessary it will not make major difference uh, for low for low level content because all of that content is meant to be able to be beaten in uh, level appropriate uh, numbers level appropriate gear yes thank you uh, and mostly green gear uh, very little solo content which will require you to have better than green gear.
so it's just a case of actually twinking, I guess that would be the term. As you are then equipping gear which would otherwise not be used in that area. Right, now speed upgrade. Here you have also very uh, good vendor to know about. Uh, these two stooges here are PP vendors. However, what they do sell is that for, for very small, at least that when you get to the end game, for a very small amount of like bullions, you can buy end game animas. Uh, which will keep you 100, so you can have a few in, as a backup. So, uh, they do reset when you die, so just make sure that you don't waste them as 6 black bullions can be pricey at this stage in game. It will be nothing a bit later on, but at this stage it might be pricey. But 100 points more into a stat at, at this early level will probably uh, travelize the content so uh, if you are glancing and you can't do enough damage because your hit rating is too low getting hit rating anima will solve all your worries so if you are struggling with the boss that will solve it if you have enough hit rating and low pen rating then get a penetrating anima and not only will you be uh, not, not be blocked but you will also be penetrating a fair amount and as I said, the penetrating hit is 40% more damage. Here we go, found it! Quickened Anima. Slightly faster now. Grats. Oh yeah, I feel like I won the game already. <laughs> this race is not over, my brand. <laughs> no, by all means. I don't feel like I'm. The major benefit which I have compared to A Wall is obviously the fight picking group. But for normal content, you've seen me grouping today, it does make things easier if you're undergeared or if your build is not up to scrap because you made some choices which uh, have given you for a short time. But to be honest, uh, you have also seen that there's not really much content as long as you have a decent build and a uh, um, can do attitude. Put enough gear. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> oh. And can do attitude. Yeah, yeah. You will be able to solo pretty much anything without much worries. Uh, and uh, so the benefit of grouping for missions is kind of questionable. You might do, be able to do some of them faster, but at the same time some of them will be much more slower because you don't have group um, recognition, so you will be then fighting for objectives with your group. Like the one I've done today multiple times where I had to gather those anima charges, and that was not a group credit, so every one of yeah. us had to gather them themselves. So that will actually slow you down. But it is considerably more fun to group. And if you are able to come to Team Speak like we are sitting in the table now, it is even better because then you don't have to stop and type. 
I know that some people are able to type while they're fighting. Crazy people. To be honest, I have no idea how that is even possible. Alright, so here you see another mechanic which is nice, you have uh, items which can be used uh, for different effects. So you uh, got an inventory item here which is a hard hat with a flashlight, which actually puts a uh, light in front of me, making uh, solving the mission somewhat easier than it would have otherwise been. So, uh, and there are quite a few of uh, these touches around the game, as already mentioned, which make it more enjoyable to do pretty much the same mission as always, go there, kill that, fetch that.
To be honest, I'm kind of curious as to how they got a giant vent to go down the garage. I did wonder that myself. Um, I decided in pieces. Sort <laughs> of, he's actually a Swedish one to go. Um, some assembly required. This is actually one of a few garage missions in this game which to me are gonna feel always the same. Do have different mechanics in them somewhat. But it's always about getting to the bottom of the garage and then fighting yourself out of the bottom of the garage. Which leaves you with the question why in the hell did I go to the bottom of the garage? Where they keep the car. In places which are pitch dark, uh, it's always useful. You can have uh, just out of practicality, you can have uh, nearby um, uh, name plates and help them. Yeah, that's the one activated because that will allow you to see where the different targets are hiding. So you don't get too surprised. Uh, however, if you kind of enjoy being surprised, then probably want to turn it off and just soak it in. <laughs> You can also see that the way you interrupt the mobs and their casts is also the same way the mobs can interrupt you and your casts. So you need to be aware of that. So if you have mobs which use stuns, then uh, it's likely that 
you will not get to finish your uh, long casting abilities. So then you need to either interrupt them first or uh, wait for them to stun you and use your cast ability afterwards. Or obviously just use instant casts. That works as well. Now for people watching uh, my stream, you may have noticed that uh, I just derped and uh, sold off a um, useful um, potion, which is my QR3 leech potions. Um, so what I've done is I've just gone to the sell tab of the vendor and clicked buy back and it will record... I don't know how many transactions it is, but it's a lot. Um, and so uh, just you don't need to worry about uh, sort of accidentally selling stuff uh, it will all automatically be uh, retained and you can buy it back from any vendor um, sort of it doesn't have to be the same one that you sold uh, stuff to accidentally um, can be very useful yeah and if you derp in crafting for example and like you make a uh, top end item and then override some stats on it by mistake because they all look the same <laughs> in terms of visuals uh, the GM's will be able to restore your item they can do so uh, I think one per some number of weeks it's one a month week basically one a month yeah um. so uh, you have some uh, ways to get things back uh, without too much trouble obviously if you make a habit of ruining your items then no one can help you but yeah personally I would say that I I would be reticent at relying on that too much um, because if you're going to uh, be regularly using um, that uh, sort of like rescue service then given that they will only uh, rescue something once a month if you act, if you use it and then go oh no I didn't want to do it on that and then the following day you accidentally delete your all singing all dancing epic sword then sort of you will have uh, used up your once a month restore um, on potentially a smaller item so it is there in case of emergencies but you really should use it in case of emergencies um, and and I certainly wouldn't personally use it on on anything less than an, on an epic um, but yeah fun fun Mm. All right. So I'm close enough to rank three, and rank three is a speed three upgrade, which I will most likely not be able to afford. As that one costs. 500,000. 500,000, yes. And the last one costs 1 million, which is the purple one. Uh, however, if you have purchased the Frankenchopper, you can just go to speed 6 from get go. Yeah. Um, we agreed uh, up front that we were not going to be using that so that we would be able to uh, sort of better replicate the kind of conditions which newer players were going to be. Uh, experiencing um, but frankly if I were you buy Frank and Chopper <laughs> uh, and having higher speed really does have a significant impact on your leveling speed um, you can level perfectly well without it but yeah it makes life so much easier just because it reduces all your travel time.
and it gives you a better opportunity to run away. Indeed. Which, given that I'm speaking as someone who just got shot in the back by ranged mobs, is not to be underestimated. And also, it's very important that you don't just look at the fusion rating of the items which you are yeah. equipping. That stat is just useless, as uh, uh, it takes the general power of the item and kind of converts it to one rating, but that tells absolutely nothing about the item, uh, because the stats might be completely wrong for you. It will have higher fusion rating, but instead of having damage stats, it will have tanking stats. Even though it's an attack rating talisman, for example. Uh, or it's a tanking talisman and you need attack rating talismans and stuff like that. So you just you really need to understand what you're looking for. And it's rather better to look at the stat changes compared to then the fusion rating. Fusion rating doesn't really mean anything, but look at the stat changes. What you are looking for are items which will increase your uh, damage. And if you do some healing, then uh, you will have one healing piece probably. But don't put more than one piece on, uh, unless you're actually going to go and heal a dungeon. Um, so if you have... Uh, if you're just trying to do what I do, then you will see that I'm looking for pen and the heat increases, obviously. If it's a sacrifice, then I will need to look at my total stats to see how much sacrifice in one I'm able to take. I'm al always obviously looking at also attack rating increases and heat points. Uh, I'd rather have more attack rating than hit points, but still you need to have at least the amount of hit points I have now, which is 2.5k. Uh, probably 3k is much more comfortable for most, but so far the content has been easy enough to be doing 2.5k. Yeah, so here is a beautiful piece, uh, which is a, fortunately a headpiece, because I got a lady blue one there, so which will probably give a better increase. Maybe, not sure, but we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, it's much better attack rating increase on the blue one. But you can see that all of the green stats are the one I was talking about that I want now. Uh, but I obviously be taking the blue one once I have the skills rather than the green one.
Alright, so just cleaned out my inventory some and sold off the items which I gathered over time and now at 200k packs, I'm still 300k short for the speed upgrade. So hopefully we will see that money coming in later on. Right, some items which cannot be sold, you will have to delete. You can see also I have a mission items uh, which were not removed. Uh, those sometimes can be deleted, sometimes cannot. And some of them can be used outside of mission, like the hard hat with the flashlight. You can keep it and use it other places as a social item. Or indeed, just as uh, it seems a bit dark in here, item. Indeed. Also, in terms of upgrading your skills to get the talismans, uh, the headpiece, uh, in terms of the piece itself, will give you the most upgrade. But you only have one headpiece, while you have three majors and three minors. So, it will come down to what you have available. If you have already a headpiece like myself available to be to, for an upgrade, then I will probably invest first in upgrading my head, but otherwise I would probably start with the majors and then minors and then the head piece, simply because there are more pieces to upgrade, uh, which is uh, which will give a higher benefit. In the end, everything is going to be level ten, so it's a very intermediate problem. It is also worthwhile to, if you die while playing, or even just die for the sake of dying is to run around areas in animal form you might find some interesting things uh, which uh, can be a lot of fun maybe spooky Is greatly appreciated. I will not forget you in my report to the council. You see that I've uh, run a bit too far away from the mission area and I'm now told to run back.
So here at the Council of Venice uh, guys uh, in uh, Savage Coast, you can see that they're selling kill 5 blues. Uh, if you need kill 5 blues and uh, so forth, you're probably better served just waiting a little again, just going to the Blue Mountain and getting kill 6. So here we are in the blue mountain. On this bridge, just a friendly advice, run. as they are getting up Alright, so I think I'm going to be stopping now, I reached Blue Mountain, I have uh, upgraded my weapon skills to uh, kill 5, uh, so, I mean skill level 5, I can equip kill 6 now, I have just upgraded my talisman to skill level 3 so I can put on 4, and uh, I haven't gotten much in terms of APs, as uh, so you still get 3 APs per skill level, but that will follow shortly. So I'm now basically ready for Blue Mountain, at least in terms of getting boosted through Blue Mountain. Um, and. Uh, get some upgrades. So just having the blue weapons from Blue Mountain will help immensely with dealing with the... Uh, uh, I mean, having blue weapons from Darkness of Wars dungeon in Blue Mountain will help immensely dealing with the Blue Mountain storyline. The only thing I actually want from Blue Mountain is to get my skills to level 5 and I only have 3 skills left which I need to upgrade with my talisman skills. 
uh, maybe a bit further. Uh, that means that I will be able to equip all of the gear I get from Darkness Wars, which is QL6 Blues. And that will comfortably serve me for a little bit in Egypt. Until I can get better, better gear there. So that's going to be probably a priority next time. So thanks for watching my stream. Uh, and you can now follow AWOL if you've been watching me or preferably you've just been watching both of us at the same time. Yep. All right. Streams everywhere. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, on our Cabal website, you can see both streams at the same time. And since we are in the same chat channel, <laughs> it shouldn't matter which one you're listening to. Well, see you well, Flop. Yeah, see you. See you, see you. There we go. Uh, for those of you who are switching over to my channel, um, welcome. You've made an excellent choice. Um, but uh, I'm just going to basically finish off this mission in uh, uh, Scorched Desert, and then I think I'm probably going to head to bed on the basis of it nearly 2 o'clock. And uh, my wife will kill me if she finds out that I'm staying up this late. So I've been doing the uh, uh, whole Lone Wolf stuff, um, and yeah, it's been going fairly well. Um, I'm now uh, actually quite a good chunk of the way through uh, Scorched Desert. Um, I've got uh, a couple of upgrades. Um, I'm still uh, using my Blue Fist weapon, uh, which I actually got in... Uh, uh, Blue Mountain, um, just as Kloposhka uh, was talking about. Uh, however, I have managed to upgrade my sword so that I am now actually using a blue QL10 sword, um, which it, uh, really helps my damage. Um, and given that quite a lot of my gear is uh, fairly low, um, that is a nice thing. So. I'll upgrade my headpiece there. Um, now really, I should probably have upgraded my fist weapon, but given that I've got a uh, blue uh, QL6, uh, now that I've upgraded all of my gear to the point where I'm actually able to uh, equip uh, all of the drops which should be coming in this zone. Uh, I'm now going to focus on getting my uh, fist weapon up to the QL10 also. Um, so, uh, not sure how much of the skill wheel Flopushka has got filled out, um, but uh, I've been doing quite well in getting my uh, in getting the different parts of my build uh, fleshed out uh, so that uh, I've got 17% completion, oh yes, um, which <sighs> it, it's nothing particularly stunning but it's useful because I've got builds from, uh, I've got abilities from fairly, fairly all over um, which are coming together to form my Fist Blade build. Um, now I've just been uh, impaired here, so time for a little bit of active positioning. Um, slightly wishing that I had thought through which of my impairs I was going to have available. And User disconnected from your channel. Oh, pop that potion just a second too late. Damn. Um, so, oh, I need to go back to... Oh, back to the beginning of that uh, particular little bit. So... So at the moment I can actually get an upgrade in terms of attack rating, but not so much in terms of the glyph. The glyph's all wrong for that. Um, 
and that's a blood magic focus, which is not going to help. Cure uh, four. Hmm. So, having just commented about changing my build, let's change my build. Um, So at that time, instead of taking a sound listing and uh, getting killed by it, um, I just nip around the corner, line of sighted it, and it's all good. Unfortunately, I'm now going to have to do it all over again. Uh, but this time with a little bit less help. And the artifact is complete. So I can now head back out of here. Oh, I've got a good chunk of uh, AP for that, actually. Um, and I'm currently working towards the passive of Leeching Frenzy, because it's really kick-ass. Um, great for survival. Um, and that's going to be pretty much the uh, self-heal which I rely on for the rest of my time in game. Um, So I'm going to charge this up, and hopefully... Ooh. Ooh, now that's a much nicer attack creating a headpiece. So we'll switch to that. And we'll disassemble the other one. Which will get us some lovely fires to turn into leech potions. So, with that, I'm going to get attacked by locusts. Um, 
which are no match for my mighty blade. Um, yeah, so I suspect that my next mission, which I'm going to want to do, is going to be up around Saeed again. Uh, so I'm going to jump to this Scorch Flats animal well. Uh, and with that, I'm going to call it a night from me. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm sure that there'll be some more leveling tomorrow. Uh...